Hi, I'm Wendy Rutledge with the Palm Beach Civic Association and Palm Beach TV. Normally, Tim Malloy is here to introduce the stories, but he is off this week. And we thought we were going to be off too, but as you can see, there is so much weather down here. A lot of wind, huge, big surf, a lot of waves, some flooding that we thought you would need to know what's going on here with regard to the weather. Palm Beach Island got slammed this week with high winds, rough surf, and king tides that pushed water onto land, causing flooding in low-lying areas. This churned up weather system, all thanks to Hurricane Teddy, which is now weakening as it moves north-northeast off Nova Scotia. Now that Hurricane Beta is losing steam as it rains its way north, meteorologists are predicting a lull in this highly active hurricane season, at least for a week or so. We're here at the lake trail, and as you can see, it is clearly all flooded out, high water, flooded areas adjacent to the lake trail as well as like a slew of water along the lake trail looks like a river really this is the bradley park entrance to the lake trail completely inaccessible due to flooded out conditions extending many yards inland this flooding goes on for blocks and blocks covering the popular path everywhere it runs adjacent to the seawall those who did find their way onto the trail were forced to carefully maneuver along the narrow barrier wall in order to avoid soaking their sneakers. We even found a school of mullet washed up and over the seawall, happily swimming along the lake trail rather than in the lake. We caught up with town engineer Patricia Strayer, who says the town of Palm Beach is actually way ahead when it comes to protection from flooding. The town of Palm Beach is in a much different situation than uh, other areas uh, that are seeing sea level rise because we have uh, a pump system. Uh, our drainage is driven by uh, the stormwater pump stations. So that's what they're doing to Miami Beach right now. They're installing pump stations to fight back against the sea level rise. And Palm Beach already has them. Palm Beach already has 13 of them. To learn more about what's going on with this weather pattern and how it's affecting the entire island, we talked to our resident expert, Lex the Lifeguard. We had Teddy up there, the Hurricane Teddy up in the North Atlantic. Um, that sent down a lot of this groundswell that you see out here. But once the low pressure system moved down past that, it sent a huge wind fetch. And now it's the winds are onshore instead of being offshore. And it's just making this, you know, super brutal super gnarly, you know, as you said, um, waves and conditions right now. So this is not a surfer's wave at all? No, it is. I mean, we would say, you know, experts only today. You got to know what you're looking for going out there. Um, for workout this morning as a group, we did a huge drift from the flagpole down with fins on, just in the water, you know, just we're always trying to be familiar with the bottom and what's going, what's going on out there just, you know, in case. Wow. And how, how is it affecting erosion? I mean, it's, take, well, it's hard to say right now just because the, the water line's coming up so high, but it looks like it's taking a good amount of the beach away. Um, but we've been surprised that after the storms and after these swells pass, there's been a lot of beach left over afterwards. That escarpment that you see right now down there, that could be the drop-off point, but it, it could extend you know, as far as probably 20 or 30 yards east of that too. Trending this season, it looks like nothing's gonna be making it our way that could you know, cause any harm to the state. But I mean, it looks like we're gonna have a good season for surf and stuff, which is exciting. Cause it's late in the season and it's kind of the start of like the winter time when we get waves. So we just gotta see what happens. As you know, this is not a scarf. It is a form of facial protection. And what we're seeing really everywhere is a lot of people have this sort of mask fatigue right now. They're tired of wearing them. They feel that they can't breathe very well. Well, the problem is, Wearing it down around your neck or below your nose is completely ineffective and not preventing you or the people you're around from COVID-19. We've all seen this sort of half-hearted mask wearing hanging around your neck, above your forehead, below the nose, below the chin, hanging off your ear or even 
carried around on your sleeve. It's as though some people believe just having the mask nearby is good enough, that that's how they're being compliant. But that simply is not the case. The key behind mask wearing is source control and it stops the droplets from coming out of your mouth if you were to cough, sneeze, or talk loudly. If you wear a mask and your nose is open, the droplets are simply going out. So while though it's reduced from the amount that goes out of your mouth, it's still quite a bit. So the ideal method to wear this is above your nose and below your chin so that all sources of respiratory droplets can be captured. We have to remember that this COVID-19 crisis is not over and that we have to work together to slow the spread. My mask is, prepared, is protecting you. Your mask that you're wearing is going to protect me. So really the only way this works is a combination of both of us wearing a mask, socially distancing where we can, and hand washing. Those three things combined is really is the key to preventing the spread of the virus. As for face shields, experts advise we resist the temptation to cheat. The goal is to have it down like this so it protects. If it steams up and you can't see and you lift it up like this, this is even worse than not wearing it because all of the droplets now are being exposed this way. So the key is having it down low and wrapping around so that any kind of droplets can get captured into the shield. I'm Wendy Rutledge with the Palm Beach Civic Association and Palm Beach TV. Tim Malloy will be back next week. We do want to remind you, though, that membership matters. If you are not a member, we want you to join us. If you are a member, please renew. The Palm Beach Civic Association is grateful to our director, Leslie Smith, and the Fortin Foundation of Florida for their continued support and sponsorship of our newscast for the 2020-2021 season. We leave you now with our churning ocean. <laughs>